Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome to another video on the FIA series, manufacturer series, here at Monza, the Autodrome of Mayhem, as it translates to an English. Okay, here it is, qualifying. I've gone, as, as we always are, in the Porsche, the Cayman around Monza. It's not always going to be the easiest race. As soon as I saw that it was going to be Monza, I knew that I was going to be in for a for a difficult ride. Cayman's a really good handling car. Uh, around a lot of tracks, it, it you know it really is very quick, good on its tyres, except for when I'm driving it. And it handles well. You know it's got it's just got well it's well balanced. It's got good overall grip. The main problem with it is its top speed, and of course at the cathedral of speed that Monza is, uh, I'm therefore going to struggle to an extent. Coming out of the second chicane there, you can see getting slightly unhinged from our, from our level of grip as we uh, kind of slide wide, lose a couple of tens. A good barometer in this race is Key25. I've mentioned a couple of times he's featured in a couple of the videos recently. He's also driving the uh, Porsche Cayman. And you know, if he's not going to be in the top three, which he normally is, he's normally right up the top, then I, I, I can probably tell that the car isn't quite up to scratch. So I can get my excuses in early. Uh, I can blame the car for everything that happens during the course of this race. It's not, it's not down to me at all. It's purely down to the car. Now into the final turn. Parabolica. Uh, nicely done there, actually. As we round out the lap. We look like the Mustang ahead. We, we were in his slipstream at the beginning of the lap. And by the end of it, we are a long way off of that. He actually qualified second, does the Mustang. Key into third in uh, almost pole position, only less than a tenth away. And I'm well down, 16th. As we can see here, it would just be a good battle to try to not finish down towards the tail end of the grid. But um, as I say, it's going to be a difficult race. And all I can do is just do my best and see how, so, see how I perform. But for now, we're going to roll the intro. Peggy 18. Oh my god. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. No, don't do this. No, don't do this. Please, don't do this. Get up. Get up. Let's get up. Don't, don't do it. Man, don't do it. No, don't do it. Think of your family. Think of your fans. Think of everybody. You got to be kidding me. See. Hope you're ready for the next episode. Hey. Get penalties every day. Right then, here we are. How many laps is it? Eight laps. It's eight laps around Monza. We're looking at a, an easy strategy here with our quick maths lesson. Eight divided by two equals four. So there are two stints, four laps each, eight laps in total. We've gone for the soft tyre. Monza isn't too strenuous on the tyres. Of course, a lot of the lap is, just fe uh, is spent full throttle up in a straight line. Therefore, you're not really wearing out the tyres too much around here. In fact, he was actually saying you can actually do this as a no-stopper if you're kind of uninterrupted in tra uh, without traffic. Through turn one, and typically this place is chaotic, but with the new penalty system the way it is, I think people be, uh, being a lot more careful, you do lose a lot of time. You know, I kind of, well, I didn't kind of, I definitely practised getting a penalty just to see how much time you lose. You'll see, well, we'll see, hopefully, or hopefully not. We'll, we'll see. Hopefully, I won't be getting a penalty. Uh, I'm going to pause it here because you're about to see one of the worst uh, warding of a penalty, in fact. Watch PRT Snake. I guess slammed into the rear end. I slammed into the rear end of PRT Snake. And yes, he gets a five second penalty. So, congratulations to you. You've been awarded the worst penalty awarding of the year, maybe of ever. He was totally the innocent party there and he'll have to slow down for five seconds and we'll see exactly how much time he loses because starting here you see you see exactly where that penalty marker is coming out of uh, Lesmo 2 onto this straight towards Iscari now these um, these penalties you know you have to serve them uh, the game kind of slows your car down for you you can't you know there's no choice over it and that is in one of the worst places to, to slow down potentially uh, onto the beginning of a long straight so you lose a lot of time so if you have like a one second penalty you're going to lose more than a second 
it used to be different before, of course, if you serve it before the finish line. With the one second penalty, you lose maybe half a second, but now it's probably doubled. You lose like double the length of time, if not more. Therefore, it's a really big deterrent to not get penalties around here. Uh, the fact that where, where the penalty thing is situated, and it's like that most tracks coming out of a slow chicane or something and going onto a long straight, they, they're normally in that kind of a position. And that is a big deterrent, I think. I would say that this system now is better than it was before. So people just carrying penalties to the finish line and then serving it all in one one go. I think you do lose a lot more time now and having to serve it in the middle of the race rather than right at the end, it, that's, that's more of a deterrent. So I would say people are trying to be more careful now. Hopefully that does continue. Hopefully people will, will try to continue that way. The main, main trouble really with the penalties is corner cutting that's where you're really going to get them I think for contact it's not as strong a deterrent it's really around a track like this it's the corner cutting that you really do have to avoid so uh, thus far we've been okay as the Audi ahead gets slightly wide slightly loose over the Astro turn and we've got Apex Chris here going very slowly in is it the NSX uh, we're going to go past him uh, up into 13 we started 15 and not really expecting too much. I mean, the main thing here really is trying to take advantage of other people getting penalties, getting involved in collisions, crashes, that kind of thing. Just having a clean race wherever possible. And and if possible, trying to keep in the slipstream because this car, as I say, not great in a line. Therefore, you really do need that extra suck down the long straights, of which there are many around Monza, of course. And scanning ahead, there's three abreast up ahead as we actually get the run on the Audi on the way out of Parabolica. We're going to really try to get onto the back of the group ahead. We're not quite there. We're over a second behind, so we're not going to be getting the slipstream of that group. Apex Chris actually giving us a nice boost from behind. And then I'm going to eventually tuck to the left and take the normal breaking point on the 150. He's up the inside. I think he's gone very deep. And I'm going to try to cut him back, and it didn't quite work out as I anticipated. I was expecting him to go kind of straight over there. And I've been awarded a penalty. Thank you very much. It was all got a bit awkward there, to be honest. And uh, I've been awarded with, with a penalty, I think, for cutting the apex of turn one rather than for the contact through the, uh, through the chicane. So we have to deal with that. Let's see if we're actually going to serve it now. I think in FIA races you serve it every lap. Uh, that's the way it seems to be so far. And Apex Chris very wide again in the NSX through Lesmo 1. I'm going to go past him, but he's going to re pass me here. As um, well, we'll see how much time I lose. It was a one second penalty near enough. And you can see here, oh, so frustrating to lose one, two, three, four positions. And I would say more than a second there, maybe two, three seconds I've lost. So, big deterrent. Don't do that, don't get the penalties. Otherwise, you'll lose a lot of time, especially around a track like this. And as I say, don't get a penalty. Guess what I've just done? Yeah, I've got myself a 3.7 second penalty. Absolute bottle job. What the hell am I doing? Maybe a bit of luck can come my way through turn one. Apex Chris having a really torrid time on the brakes. And having to clamber all over the kerbs and someone else uh, blazes off. I gained another two positions. I am going to lose these positions, though. Into the second chicane. And whoa, what the hell happened there? He was claimed by the Illuminati and uh, alien, alien forces have, have whisked him away to try to cut the corner. I think in trying to avoid contact, to be honest, to be fair to him, I think he was just trying to avoid getting or smashing into the back of someone else. So a nice little um, duo here, a duet, me and Snake serving penalties at the same time. And then the other two here come flying through the centre of us. I'm down to 16th. This is really not going very well at all. As we reach the halfway mark into the race at the end of lap 4. If you remember our quick maths lesson at the start, 8 divided by 2 equals 4. We are coming into the pits at the end of this lap, which is right now. There we go. Onto the soft tyre once again. And uh, pulling away. And here comes a sudden and shocking realisation as I go into... Yes, that's right. I'm in last place, ladies and gentlemen. Last place. This isn't something that happens often. 
but it's happened right now and well it's just not a good not a good time for me at all as I get killed down in 80 well 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 really really just a shocking performance and this while I was while I was going around here I was really thinking to myself do I need to get myself on that wheel is the wheel is it time for the wheel please answer me uh, in the comments is it time to make the switch because well I had some you know I had some good races this year and I did qualify for the Barcelona event one of the esports events I was on I was already in uh, Mexico so I couldn't quite go to that as I actually go through to not be last so I did qualify for events on a controller problem is at the events if I were to go to one you, you play on a wheel as I go past another player there onto 60 up behind a blazer once again and well yeah, you know it I got myself a penalty I'm not quite concentrating as much as I should be I was actually very angry at this point when you drive angry bad things happen and I'm down into last once again lap 7 though I managed to sling one up the inside into Ascari and not be last good times indeed or less bad times indeed as we go through there onto the back straight before Parabolic up now this was the last lap it was a battle to not finish last, to have that shameful position of 18th. Uh, defending into turn 1, there's one lap left, I just need to keep my position as much as possible and not really think about going forward at all. And again, second chicane, defensive line, the car squirming all over the place on the brakes. And are we going to, no, we're not going to get a penalty this time, I'm going to play it absolutely safe, which I should have done for the whole race to be fair, into Parabolica and Unfortunately for this guy, he's found himself off the circuit once again. I think it's like the third time. And, well, that helps me. I'm going to gain a position and be one further place from last. Let's cross the line. Someone else got a penalty, PRT Snake. A six second penalty. So, if you, in case you were wondering, if you get a penalty on the last lap after the penalty uh, where you normally serve your penalty, then uh, you serve it on the line. And I want to blow my car up and forget about that silly race. So we move to daily race B with the uh, the nice shuffle move going on here. Now this is going to be a very quick recap of this race. Uh, so we started off with the shuffle. I went around the outside of this guy, misjudged it completely, onto the grass, went from a possible 8th down to 12th, 13th, 14, yeah, losing more positions, lose, lose like six positions, and try and bash him out of the way, go past the shuffle of man, and then I just murder this guy, shove him into the wall, um, get a three second penalty, then slow down, and just let him go, because, you know, what's the point, might as well just let him, let him go back ahead, even the shuffler here, he looks on in disgust, and he's the only person I finished ahead of, the shuffler. I was last, apart from the shuffler. We go again. Another big shuffling incident. Um, but I'm in the Alpha 4C. This one actually helped me here. You can see the gap I kind of developed over the cars behind. And I've got much more momentum compared to the guys ahead. Look at this. Uh, so, I thought I was going to get really slowed down. But actually, this has kind of boosted me and propelled me into a decent position. As I'm now already within range to go for a move. So the, the shuffler there on the last turn actually helped me. Thank you very much for the inadvertent shuffle. And it's actually opened up a gap behind. So he couldn't have really gone much better. We actually finally have some luck. Good stuff indeed. So up into 8th, gone for the Alpha 4C. This car is fairly tricky to drive. It has a good front end. It, it turns in, but then it oversteers as well. You do have to manage that. The Audi TT, I don't particularly like driving it. But it is a good car for this track. It's very, very rigid, very solid. It understeers a lot on throttle. It's not a particularly pleasant car to drive, but who doesn't like a load of titties uh, on the track at the same time? I'm trying to go past this titty here, but not quite making it. The the main disadvantage or the main weakness, I would say, of this car, the Alpha 4C, is its straight line speed. So, in a similar way to the Monza race, I do have to kind of tuck into the slipstream as much as possible and get pulled along by the faster cars so make the most of the, t uh, the straight line speed by following someone and then capitalize on the cornering grip that this car has on the corners wherever possible settling then into eighth position halfway through this uh, lap this is daily race b and uh, it's just three laps 
the lap time is around about two and a half minutes, so we're looking at seven and a half minutes roughly for a race, depending on how many penalties you get and how many shuffling incidents there are. But at this point here, things are going well as I look up the inside. A bit of contact between the two of us. The old Spanish rivalry back in full swing. And am I going to be able to go up the inside here? No, a little bit too far back. Almost making contact with the back of the Spaniard. And the, the group ahead looks fairly close in, in proximity to each other. I'm going to try to not make a mistake through this chicane here. Tricky little corner this. Just going to let off and try to maximise the curve on the left hand side. And uh, I did get a better run, but I just run into the back of him. And actually gave him a boost. Which doesn't help my own cause. Uh, here's the shuffler once again. And on the exit, decent exit that. And I'm going to try to fight to get the slipstream of the Lamborghini. There we go, we can get it now. And uh, that helps me out. Are we going to go for the move into turn one, lap number two? The Spaniard's going to go for the move, I think, on the Lamborghini. It's a strong move, barges in wide. And I'm going to take advantage of both of them. And go up into C. Place. Nice stuff. Right. Okay, can we fight our way forwards here? There's a big group uh, fighting for seconds, and I should have defended that to be honest. I was, I was think, I was hoping that he would give me a boost by going to the back of me, and he's going to slide his way through and retake my favourite position. Okay, by the looking ahead, the group is very close in proximity to each other. They are going to be fighting. There's definitely a chance here. In fact, they're going through there um, as if they're going to Noah's Ark two by two. And that's not going to be an ideal situation for them. They're going to be slowing each other down massively. And I can see already on this lap that we've definitely gained. Whether or not it'll be enough for us to fully gain, I don't know. But looking at the two ahead, two at the front of that group, they're going through here side by side. They are definitely uh, get engaged in battle. Uh, World War Three, essentially. They will then sweep to the left. Lots of very long corners here at Kyoto. And... Uh, you do need a specific type of car that really does well around those corners. So the, t the Audi TT, very stiff car, but it kind of deals well with those corners. And I remember the Beetle does very well around here as well in Group 3, and that's kind of a very stiff car. It's very similar to the, the Audi TT, actually, in the way that it drives. Okay, then. Through here, you see, again, we are getting closer, definitely getting closer. The Lamborghini's still behind, not too far away, although I do sense that that Huracan, a little bit down on power, and uh, not quite quite able to really force a pass at this moment. Almost into the back of the Spaniard. And I almost misjudged that breaking point to a fatality kind of ending. It wasn't quite that way though. I just about had to bail out. Coming down towards the final chicane. And uh, this this group has definitely got a lot bigger now. Looking up the inside, I wasn't quite going to go for the double overtake. I'm going to go up the inside of the Cayman. And then Leonidas and then the Spaniard. It all gets a bit awkward as we go through the final turn. I think, oh, it was a strong move. I was up the inside of the uh, the German there. I think he kind of turned across as well. It was a bit of an awkward moment. Uh, no penalties though, so we, we continue. Through turn one, up to fifth. That's a good result so far. We can definitely maybe go for fourth. The Spaniard in, th uh, in third has a 0.6 penalty. I'm not sure that's going to be enough at this point here for us to overhaul him. He's not going to lose that quite that much time. Looking up the inside here, he's kind of carried me through the S's. And you see the guys behind swarming all over the place and uh, trying to retake their positions. And unfortunately here, the, the Spaniard takes a really kind of slow line on the inside. I followed him through on the inside, hoping that the, the German wouldn't be able to go around the outside. And yeah, unfortunately the Spaniard took quite a slow line and I just got hemmed in behind him. Couldn't really do much about it. Up the inside then, into the hairpin. Tiny bit of contact on the way through. Can I keep the position? I'm going to look up the inside really to cover off the position behind. Not so much to go for the move, but it's kind of worked out as, as intended. Uh, prevented the move from behind and again having to prevent another move in the chicane. We're keeping fifth at this moment. Can we just keep in that slipstream of the German ahead? That might be crucial at this point here. I need all the speed I can get to keep this group behind. They are barely two steps behind, which is very, very close indeed. Maybe even the gap, uh, the gap to the guys in second and third could come down if they start fighting. In fact, just looking behind there briefly, 
the gap behind uh, did increase slightly. They are fighting, which is good. I need them to fight as much as possible to give me a bit of uh, breathing space. Through that hairpin quite nicely, I think I've gained on the German. But you can see here, just as we go up the hill, just begins to edge away slightly, as I don't have, quite have the power to match him through that section of the circuit. Into the hairpin, and sliding through there on the way in, it's not going to be the fastest line. We both run fairly wide on the exit, kind of follow him as if we are on a, a train track. Into the chicane, over the curb, big slide, it's not going to help me on the exit. I was planning to really launch that curb and go for a move. I'm going to have to go very defensive into the final turn, and uh, the Cayman doesn't quite think about going for it. I'm sliding through the turn, that's not going to help me on the way out, and this could be crucial here. I need the slipstream of the Audi ahead, and they are swarming all over behind. And they're potentially going to go for this move. I'm going to move over slightly to the right to make him uh, have to go the long way round. And I keep the position by barely half a tenth. It's a very close finish. And ultimately a very good race. I really enjoyed that one. So three three races for you today. And two of them were fairly awful. But I'd like to think that that last one there was actually a fairly good race to watch. And that is the end. Uh, thank you very much for watching as always. And uh, let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed it. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.